Is it wrong that I'm kind of looking at the TT Combat website and seriously considering making another order? <laughs> no. Brought to you by some guys on the internet. This is getting tabled. With your hosts, Jason the Bruce. You guy! George the Yang. I hope you're all entertained by my inaptitude. Jason, a.k.a. Major Socks. We've been doing this and talking about various stuff. One of the stuff. Now sit back, relax, and get tabled. Hello, future people, and welcome to episode 71 of Getting One. Tabled with your host, The Bruce. Hello, folks. How are you doing? I love how Major Sox is rolling his eyes at the camera because of what I did to his voice in that little snippet. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. And then, and then that's that's Major Sox for hello everyone. For those who can't see what's going on. Hey, not everyone can be nice and just deliver like you know pure gold of you know being an idiot. No, George does that without even trying. And there's yeah, George, I, folks. Yep, that's that's how I roll. <laughs> and for those that don't know where that comes from, you should have watched the holiday special all the way through. And if you haven't, that's not my problem. <laughs> Speaking of watching things all the way through, I dropped a, a, a link to a, a certain uh, terrain tuner. Yes. About a, an assembly video I did. And he didn't watch it all the way through. He just said, hey, that looks like great quality. You know, like, do you use any, like, sound removal stuff? I'm like... Did you not see me turn you into a serial killer? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, I'll have to go back through and watch it again, I guess. It's <laughs> funny. Oh, dear. Always watch the video in its entirety. He was clearly watching for the... I wonder what the... He was obviously thinking that you were just asking for his opinion on the quality of the filming. That's, that's yeah, fair. Probably. As opposed to teasing him, which is what you were really doing. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, it's the end of uh, January almost, uh, and and Bruce is sweating horribly. Yes, yeah. The, the the thing that's blurred behind my neck is a is a cold pack from the fridge, and it's not um, a waiter. No, it's it's it, it's helping a little bit. Yeah, well, oh, Bruce those is... are the old school blue ones from when I was in elementary school that would like give you frostbite. Yeah, oh. yeah, but it, it's cool enough now that it's not quite doing that. Oh, that's nice. Okay, we'll leave it there. <laughs> George, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pushing this button before it goes any further. You may receive more noteworthy information, especially about recent or important events. All right. Getting into the news. So, first things first, we've got some new previews for the Elder, or the El the Altari. I'm sorry, it's the Elder. Um, starting with one from a couple of weeks ago, we've got a new Autark. I'm showing this one first because although technically we spoke about it last episode, it was just the model. Uh, the day after we recorded, they actually showed off what comes in the kit. Uh, and there's... You can build this one in either a male or a female body in exactly the same pose. He has his yeah, own tactical I rock. I mean, look, he's clearly an awesome model because he's got a tactical rock. Uh, and it comes with it comes with pieces to actually make it like a warp spider and stuff. Uh, you can also give it a scorpion chain sword. I really, really like what they're doing with this. So, uh, I love so the fact that it's also compatible with the original Autark. Because normally they just go, yeah, that's gone now. And they're going, well, no, there's nothing wrong with this kit. We just put them together. And it just makes so much sense. Yeah, this this looks like a really uh, highly versatile kit that, you know, you can give it little, multiple different looks, including a boob plate. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, and it has the same amount of coverage as the guy boob plate. Yes, it's... <laughs> I completely understand why people don't like that aesthetic, and I'm not going to disagree with them, but I feel this is a lot more tasteful than what we would normally see from certain companies. Games Workshop's not really that bad with it, to be fair. Um, there's certainly worse out there. I, I'm just amused at the fact that, you know, the trope that exists 
didn't happen in a, I don't know, what, what would you say, like 95, 98% you know, male dominated, dominated hobby as far as Warhammer, and they didn't do that, I'm, I'm mildly shocked. Not mildly, though, because it's a lot easier just to add, you know, instead of, like, completely changing the chess piece. You've got to remember that Games Workshop are also actively trying to diversify their audience as well. That's you're, you're correct. That is also correct. And I know that there's a percentage of the fan base that really gets annoyed over that, but more people in our hobby is not a bad thing. And if you disagree nope. with that, we're not the ones that's wrong on the subject. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not everybody has to be into things, but it's good that more people are getting into it. Yeah. Um, um, next, we've got some uh, Dark Reapers. Yeah, um, these Dark Reapers have been getting some rather amusing memes about them. I actually really like them. Uh, they still feel like the old ones. I mean, they're very clearly based on the old sculpts, but they're just updated, much like the Howling Banshees were. Uh, I do think the Howling Banshees are better models than these are. Uh, but I do quite like this. Do, do you know what I'm doing? If I, if I if I were to ever get a kid of these, do you know what I would do? Uh, no, what are you doing? I would get, go to a third-party bit company and get different heads. That's definitely an option. Uh, and you could also do them without the helmet, I, which, honestly, I'd be very tempted to do. I don't like either either look like the the only one i even remotely like the look of is the one with the hood yes i agree with you on that yeah but how do you put that hood on with the giant things of metal sticking out the side but it it, it just goes through magically look look you just look at the the model they come out like magic see yeah so third party heads um the rest of the mini looks good the weapons look great yes i agree yeah um of all of the of all of the troop sculpts or elite sculpts or however you, like the dark reapers were probably the better of the old metals as far as holding actually no no i take that back the swooping hawks were the better of the old metals um the negative i'm going to say here is that this appears to be evidence that we are not going to be getting the um uh the leaders of the groups i can't think what they're called the phoenix lords uh, because they haven't shown off the Phoenix Lord for this group like they did with the Howling Banshees, so I'm ho I'm still maybe hoping I'm wrong on that. But yeah, maybe they're waiting for it. Um, no, I, I think they're good looking models. Uh, I'd give them the the Marie Antoinette you know treatment and go a different route, and I think they'd look great. Mm -hmm. um, I assume you've got no opinions, socks, because it's no, no. yeah, no, All not right. a whole lot. Moving on uh, to terrain stuff. And in all honesty, some really nice looking terrain stuff. I quite like this. Um, we've got a new terrain set coming. Uh, it, it feels very 40k and that's either going to be a love or a hate thing. Um, we've got like a communication tower. We've got, I think, the best looking satellite they've ever done. Like that just, it feels exactly like it is. Uh, they could probably had 50 more skulls on the um, actual dish itself because it's 40k and you meant to have skulls. Obviously, I'm being a smart ass. Um, the it's the only time you're ever smart. Well, I can try. I can try to be smart. <laughs> I want to say that the missile silo. That's I really like that. I'm hoping that there's an option to have that open though, because that would be good. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the thing that if you scroll down through the page is this terrain has actual special rules. Yes, that goes along with it. Which they which, are doing it more and more. I, I'm. I, I don't really I think have strong opinions one way or the other, but. Eh. I, 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 I think there's already too much in the game going on. You know, when you're, you you know, roll for you know this, you know what kind of terrain does the you know stuff like. We don't need, you know, like, this piece of terrain that's already doing this to the battlefield also does this. I... Um, it does, I I'm going to be quiet because if I say what I'm thinking, I'm going to get hate for it. I love the fact that yeah, there's, I, a prop, there's a propaganda I, rule. I do like that. Because yeah. it's just so... I, I think it looks great. I just... 
in today's day and age with all the other terrain choices and terrain options out there, you got to do something really good. Yeah. And yeah. Th- look, this is try. really good, and it's probably some of the best terrain for 40k they've done. I can't sit here and say that it's the best in the industry, especially with how cheap the MDF terrain is. And and honestly, I mean, this is hard plastic, and it still looks like it's an MDF terrain kit. Like seriously, it looks like it's an MDF terrain kit. But the only thing you not. couldn't fake with the MDF are the little yellow canisters on the metal missile silo, and the top part of the uh, antenna that's actually like round. Yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, b- beyond that, yeah, you could totally like import this and like laser cut it out of MDF and actually, truth be told, target. the bottom of that antenna is round as well. It's an oval by the look of it. I don't think that's a flat surface. I think that's round. Oh no, no, it is a flat surface. I stand corrected. I'm wrong. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> like I yeah, said, um... I, re- I really like this. Um, look, it's Games Workshop. Obviously, it's going to sell. Um, I think it belongs somewhere in the middle as far as quality is concerned overall when you consider the industry. But for Games Workshop, I think this is probably some of the best general terrain they've done. Um, I do think that they need to stop giving their terrain rules, though. I do like the specific piece of terrain for your army idea, but I think giving everything a rule is just... Yeah. Yeah, no, like the, I have the, nothing the, positive to say about that. The, the Fire Slayer pizza oven, you know, I yeah, I totally want one of those. Yeah, look, that's fun because it adds something to it. But when you're giving rules for everything, all you're doing is making a game that, to be honest, isn't that easy to play for a new player. All you're doing is making it harder for new people to get in. And that's not a good yeah. thing. The, the, the only reason 40K is, is as big as it is, is because it's easy to get people into it. And if you're making it harder, all you're doing is dividing an already Pushing divided audience. audience. Yeah. yeah. Um, next is, is Warhammer related. Yes. We're talking about a video game. A video game. This, this is old world, so everybody's going to love it. Look, I thought this was relevant, because... Yeah, no, for look, sure. Total War, Warhammer is, uh, well, it's the most popular of the Total War series, and it is a very popular series, uh, and arguably probably the best video game to come out of the franchise at this point. Um, I'm not going to argue that. Um, I've seen some of the other ones. Um, I've never played it. Uh, I had some friends that played the, um, oh, uh, like the first person shooter 40k one. Yeah. I, the one with the, t- uh, are you playing okay, as a that, town? Well, it, it's, it's like, um, it's like a, a battlefield, um, or company of heroes or, you know, the list goes on and on of those co-op first person shooters. And it looked like that, but with, you know, 40k, you know, oh, okay. Marines, I was like, that's kind of cool. This, I think this is way better. And yeah. this is really cool too, but I do, I'm going to complain a little bit at the end after we talk about it. Okay. Well, basically in Total Warhammer 3, you have the ability as part of the Chaos Faction to build your own Demon Prince. So there's different versions of the Demon Prince you can build. Um, obviously they're not going to be showing everything here. You can definitely see that this is based on some older stuff. Um, specifically, or this is where my history on the old world is going to fail me a little bit, and I'm going on the opinion of my housemate. It's based on stuff from around fourth and fifth edition, apparently, um, where they first started doing this and fleshing it out. So I, I do kind of like what they're doing. I mean, I, I doubt that it will have any actual impact on the game itself, but I do like what they're doing. Um, it is also worth noting that although I say this is probably the best video game that they've made from the franchise at this point. I don't play this. Uh, this is one of those games... I, I own this game, and I've tried to play it, and I just can't get into it, because it's just... It's very different... There's a lot the sort of th- Well, there's, it's there, very there's different a lot. from the sort of stuff that, I'm pl- that I normally play, so it, it, yeah. it struggles a bit with me. So I, I play a couple of the Total War series, uh, Rome, Empire, and so I can understand how it's hard to get into, because you, there is a lot going on. Yeah, the turn-based side of it is what I struggle with. Because I get to get there on the world map and I go, how am I supposed to know what to do? 
Because unless you've already played it, it doesn't really tell you. It just says that yeah. you're supposed to do a thing. It's like, uh, but you haven't told me how I do the thing. Anyway. Yeah. George so has a complaint. complaint. Yeah, so my one complaint. You can do this with the Demon Prince. That's great. That's awesome and fantastic because of all the models, both F Fantasy Sigma 40K, the Demon Prince is one of the most versatile and customizable minis out there. Mm -hmm. um, this is a video game where, like, you know, you click a button and graphics blend and merge and all sorts of fun stuff. Where's the character builders for other generals? I want my dwarf lord with, you know, the big old hammer and, like, ruined out to, you know, belief and just, you know, able to, like, you know... <clears throat> I'm sure if you, you know, when this comes out, I'm sure, depending on what you can do, like wings, right? Yeah. It'll probably be able to move faster because it can fly. You know, it's it's the same kind of, So, I think it's cool, but, you know, if you're going to do something like that, you need to have, like, a general builder for the other factions at the same time so that they all have that same option and opportunity yeah, to, that's a good point. to make their cool yeah. commander. I, I can see that. Um, this is probably the downside of doing things by factions with a video game of new, st new, new factions that you're introducing for the new video game get new stuff that the old ones don't. It doesn't mean that they won't do it, obviously. I mean, it would be a very easy way to sell DLC. Because then people that are... buck for a, a dwarf commander builder. Yeah, yep. and, my... and, and if you want it and you buy it because that's exactly what you wanted, they make money off you. And if I and if Sox doesn't like it because he thinks that's a really stupid thing to be selling, then he doesn't have to buy it and it doesn't ruin the game. Because it's not going to yeah. do anything in-game for you. It's just going to make you happier because you can personalize things. Well, the, the only thing they do for you in game is, you know, like what kind of damage you can deal based off what what kind of weapon you have, what kind of armor you have, do you have a shield, et cetera, et cetera. You know, mm -hmm. like the base stuff that is already, you know, determined by other units and their weapons and abilities. Well, yes, like I said, I don't no, I, I don't think that's. It. I, I assume that all of this is just cosmetic, and that it's not changing anything physically in the game. Uh, sorry, not physically. It's not changing anything rules wise in the game because if you look at the pictures although they're all very different they all essentially have the same stuff it's just one has one has a staff instead of a sword it doesn't necessarily change anything mechanics wise they all have wings they're just different styles of wings I, I could be wrong i just i assume that this is just a cosmetic thing to make you happy because the Demon Prince has always been something very customizable, so if we're going to give well, a Demon Prince, we should make it customizable. The, the only argument I'll say is the one that has the wings is obviously Zinch, and that's a very magic-focused uh, and heavy uh, faction. True. It, it is possible that oh. there is more to it than that. Like I said, this so is that, an assumption. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's the only thing I'll say. But like I said, you know, if you're going to do that with one faction, give all the other factions the option to do that. I mean... I'm sure there's some guy out there that loves his high elves that wants to like tweak out his high elf lord on a white horse with his magnificent pointy gold freaking hat. If you yeah, if you want to make the ultimate hairdresser, then you should be able to make the ultimate hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, moving, moving on, on and to... away from Games Workshop. Yeah, to War Cradle. Yeah, so War Cradle have released a new terrain set. This isn't new for War Cradle. They do make quite a few. Uh, War Cradle is the guys behind Wild West Exodus. So obviously <sighs> we're going to be feeling that a little bit. Uh, Dystopian Wars uh, and a few other things. This is aimed more towards your Wild West Exodus and your maybe your Mythos a little bit. Uh, this stuff is gorgeous. But this that is... Nice. Yeah. This is not pre-painted, so you would have to paint this. But buildings... These are really nice-looking buildings. <gasps> Much like the stuff that TT Combat did in their white boxes that are now being sold as individual kits. Um, so you can, I can see argument. this in modern day. Yeah, the, the warehouse... Yep. Um, I'm looking at the 100-pound set. Yes, yeah, that's what I've got open as well. The, the first warehouse one... That doesn't quite feel very Wild Westy to me. That looks very modern Wild West. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I, well, yeah. I literally did just say that. 
the bricks so, the bricks is what throws it throws it i assume yeah i mean brickwork was too. not a wasn't was very not big, a big thing. thing um the the cool thing and and i like this because then you don't have to you know you don't have to go to a hobby store specifically for Perfect. it and pay outrageously obscene amounts for it because it's just like any other part of the hobby you can get train stuff yeah. oh yeah yeah no now, it's if really you were nice to like train actual stuff. Yeah, if you were to go like to an actual like train hobby store to pick up um, that twenty four pound kit that's got like two of each thing in the little building and the fences, right? That's like thirty bucks to pick up that much track from one of those stores. That cost you like a hundred pounds, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it looks good. It looks a little too too modern. For for a wild west, west. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They named it. it they made great. it an industrial district, so it, it feels. I I, I still know, match it with those things because that's just where my head goes. Um, you, you know, because you have totally to remember, to what, Wild like... West is alternate Wild West as well. It's not actually historic. I'm sorry, um, yeah. Wild West Exodus is not historic yeah, yeah. so that does help yeah, them a little yeah. bit uh, well, no, no, when you said uh it, when you re, re said uh industrial and stuff like that all it just screamed to me like um like 1890s 1910s like yeah chicago city oh that yeah that'd be a very good setting for it yeah so yeah I, it looks good i i'm still gonna use uh if i ever um the 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 tt if. combat stuff if I'm, I'm not going to gesture at you the way I want to gesture at you right now, Bruce. <laughs> I'm not saying that you need to buy it. I'm just saying it's okay to be tempted by it. All right. Moving on away from terrain stuff. We have something a little weird that we spoke about off camera for a good three or four hours earlier in the week. Uh, yep. While we... Socks was, well, yeah. yes. Socks pointed we this out initially. Uh, yep. so, 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 I'm just going to read it as uh, on the surface for the moment. Actually, no, Socks. You talk about it on just the basic surface, and then I'll go into what I noticed later. Yep, so I found this story through my some of the Facebook groups that I'm part of. I, I play Wings of Glory, Cells of Glory, and the manufacturer, the, uh, the developer of those games, Ares, uh, based out of Italy put out an article saying that they are changing their production of those two games because they couldn't have the production um, regimen they were wanting with those two lines. Yeah, that, that they'd been struggling for, getting their stuff out for quite a while. It, it had been a complaint a from while. their distribu distribution as well. Yep, so COVID was, as we know, COVID's been a major factor with a lot of the production. And so finally, last month, they decided to switch companies altogether and we'll start production hopefully next month after the Chinese New Year. Yeah. And they're going with Dust Games. Yeah. So I'll pass and that back over to Bruce. This is what we were talking about for three or four hours afterwards. Yeah. So my initial reaction was, wait, that can't be possible. Because Dust went out of business. Now, I'm sure that people that have been following Dust for a while are already screaming at the camera going, yes, but... Hang on, let me get there. Because Dust Studios went out of business, and this is a story that we covered very briefly mm -hmm. on the podcast. Um, our Patreon members got to hear a little bit more on the subject. Uh, but Dust Games and Dust Studios are two separate businesses technically owned by the same person. So, this wasn't entirely clear because... When Dust Studios went out of business, obviously it was only talking about Dust Studios, but I think a lot of people have just assumed that it meant everything. Because yeah. you tend to forget how businesses are laid out. So Dust Games was the production side of the business. Dust Studio was the game side of the business. The game side of the business no longer exists, but this is evidence that the production is going to be continuing. Which is good for fans of 
Paulo Parente, he's not completely out of business. Uh, yeah. He actually still has something going on. Uh, and, and you know what? This is It's good to see. It's it's never good to see somebody go out of business. Um, I'm looking forward to it because back when I went to Gen Con, back in the hot LZ days, uh, back in 2017, I actually helped Ares demo some of their games. And they were talking about, down at the end of the article, it talks about the Drakens, the big World War One balloons that you would see flying around. And at the bottom of the article, it says that they're coming up, hopefully by the end of the year. And they were talking about those models back in 2017. Well, they're finally getting around to them. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what they come about. Yeah. Um, this has been something the that's been back up. desperately needed for that company for quite a while. And I'm not having a go at Ares. I just know that this has been a problem for a while. Uh, well, this is a game that was... Uh, demoed very heavily at PAX during the last year that it was active. Uh, House of the War was working directly with the distributor for this, and they were showing this game exclusively. Uh, I almost brought in about three or four times during that weekend and didn't end up doing it. It's a great um, game. I have heard nothing but positive things. It It's not a range aesthetically, because it, it's not a period of history that I'm really that interested in but the game itself yeah. looks insanely fun don't get me wrong this looks awesome um and it's and like this has been around for a while i mean people are going to look at this and go isn't this just x-wing but with different vehicles and it's like well i can see where you're coming from but at the same time I'm pretty sure this is a little older than that i could be wrong this was the precursor to x-wing it was actually um wings of war was the original edition and then aries got it and turned into Wings of Glory, and then X Wing came out probably two or three years after Wings of Glory actually was out. Now, so before we move on, I'm going to touch on the reason why I never actually ended up buying in. There is a third party model that you can buy that has unofficial rules that is Snoopy flying around on his kennel, and that's the model that I wanted. And I couldn't buy it. And then I was like, oh. oh, well, I'm not interested then. It's a doghouse, Bruce. No, no. It's his, it's his airplane. We've all seen him fly it on the airplane. Said, you called yeah, it a kennel, no, it's though. a doghouse, not a kennel. A kennel is usually a chain <laughs> like, uh, fence uh, pen for a dog. Uh, okay. That's not how we look at it over here. That's fine. A dog kennel is just where the dog lives. You guys are wrong. Look what side of the road you drive on. I mean, of course you're going to get doghouse wrong. You guys are all on as it is anyways. (laughs) Yes, yeah. (laughs) We're the ones that get it wrong, miss. I'm going to change all of the spelling of my words because I have a with my parents. Bruce, what what plane was Snoopy flying, though? Oh, that's a good question. Socks, what kind of plane is Snoopy flying? Walker DR1. A sop with camel. Oh yeah, he was. He was always fighting against the Fokker DR1. That's right. That's why I remember that Fokker. He's DR1. always You're he's right. always fighting against the Red Baron. I know that. Yep. That's yep. the in that. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Sales of Glory is not something I've had a lot of ex- lot of exposure to. I, I have heard of it. I've just not had, had exposure to it. I, I play it, but when Warlord released their Victory it's, or Black Seas game, which is their Sales of Glory <clears throat> version. Yeah, I've kind of moved away from Sales of Glory and, and kind of moved over to Black Seas because I like the mechanics of that one a little bit better. But I still yeah. have my my Sales of Glory stuff. And of course, still I have game. Armada, which is from memory, a spin-off from Black Sails. Yes, I think it is. Uh, moving on, this is a news article that I partially shared because because George loves this game. Um, you you use that word. Um, but go ahead. Partially or love? Which word? <laughs> the, the, the love. Oh. I thought, you so, did, I thought you did love this game. I, I like this game. Oh, okay, um, fine. There are some serious issues with the rules oh, okay. with this game. Uh, last I played it anyways. Well, we're getting a new expansion called the Skullbreaker Champion expansion. Like, this is, <clears throat> this is just Edgelord all over it. To the point where he has a giant axe made out of something's jaw. Like, that's obviously... A, that's not an axe. It's a sword made out of... I'm going to assume it's a dragon's jaw. Because it really feels like a dragon's jaw. Uh, it looks really cool. Oh, that's um, a really big 
really big dragon because based off the lore of the game, his little minions that are with him are normal sized people. Yeah. And then he's that much bigger, and then that's a dragon's jaw. But dragons should be that big. They are monstrous giant things. Not always. Not that big. Always. Khaleesi's were like little cat sized things for a while. Well, that's true, but they were babies. And they ended up being huge in the end. Like I would argue that they probably would have been about that size in the end. That's why they spent all of their money on the CGI and not on the script. <laughs> <laughs> script? What script? They got it from George R. R. Martin. Oh, wait. <laughs> Only after about... When did they stop following? I don't remember. So, yeah, I... Honestly, looks-wise, I mean, as much as I call it Edgelord stuff, which it is, I mean, this, I, I actually do love the look of this. This is a game that I've kind of looked from the sidelines when you got into it, because I was kind of like, I really do love the look of these models. Um, I think it would be fun for you and I to try and play a game of this over camera at some point, maybe? Sure. Um, yeah, um, so, so here, I don't love this game. The couple times I've played it, um, I did find a couple of issues with the rules. I don't know if that's been changed. I haven't looked in quite a while. Um, the the positive I will say about this game is it, it's not your standard board game. It's it's a it's a I guess a merging of a board game and a normal mini game. So kind of, kind of yeah okay yep. So, like, this is an expansion kit. So you can get this and, like, two other expansion kits, and you don't even have to use what comes in the starter boxes, and that's your army. Yeah. So I kind of like that in the fact of you can customize what army you want for this board game without having to buy crap loads amount of stuff. Yeah. So, um... It's really cool. So it, it, it's a, it's a Steamforge games. Their stuff, they just, they have good stuff too. Yeah. yeah. I mean... But there's, uh, a, there's a reason that Guild Ball was popular. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, uh, you gotta stop doing that, Bruce. <laughs> 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 um, Hot LZ, uh, 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 Levi, you know, he got into it when he moved to uh, Tennessee. Yeah. So... Guild Wars a game um, that I wanted to play for a long time, but just never bit. So, worst, the worst thing I can tell you, Bruce, is like you can buy the core starter box, that's enough to play a game, and if you like it, then you can buy more, and if not, you've just got another game to sit on the shelf. Yes, because that's what I need, is more of them. Well, no, how, how much is this? I forgot, it's been so long since I've... Uh, 50 the, bucks! Oh, yeah, no, the, the base game, it's very, very affordable. Yeah, 50 bucks! And then if you want to, you know, like, round up... Because you play with a total of three of the expansion kit si size things, right? You play with a total of three of those. So 50 bucks plus two more of those, that's another 60. So 110, you're all in. And you have, like... Well, no. If you just use your entire box and then, you know, you're in 70 bucks and then you need to go find someone else that has their own stuff. Pretty much, yeah. So, um... I think that's pretty affordable. Yeah. Um, like... But like I said, I found issues with the rules. Um, but yeah, I, I still think it's a great game. Very few games out there are perfect. Um, I, I don't really have a problem with the fact that you found issues. Um, I'd be it, kind it's of surprised pretty, if you didn't. It's a pretty glaring issue. Like Fair So like, th there's like five rounds and every... In the first round you score, you can score like one point. The second round you score two points. The third round you score three points. The fourth round you score two points. The th fifth round you score one point. You score five points total and you win. So that means you'll never play the fifth round. Yeah. Yeah. No. Fair enough. Yeah. That is. Yeah. <laughs> in, 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 unless something goes issue. massively wrong, but yeah. No, I can see. Yeah, no, you that can't. Is a problem. If you win the first two rounds and then you're in the second, the th fourth round, you win. Yeah. If if you win the you know the second and the third you know you win, if you win the first three you win. I mean there there's no mathematical way to play a fifth round in that game. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, so well, that's a problem. All right, moving on. Time to talk about some conquest stuff. 
We've got some really nice looking stuff coming out. And I'm going to start with the Mounted Squires. Because these guys look cool. We've got some alternate heads there. Some of them are scarred from battle. Because you know the Squires are not that good at fighting. They're still learning. Uh, the scale was probably created by the knight that they're working for. Let's be honest. They get treated like crap. Um, probably even more so than... than than, his, uh, than um, fantasy would like to believe. Um, I really like the look of these, honestly. So you get three in the set. It's just under 50 bucks. These are larger miniatures, you've got to remember. Um, I like the fact that they feel like they fit with the knights, but they don't feel over. Like They do feel like they've kind of thrown stuff together. As opposed to the actual mounted knights where very clearly this has been built and it's been designed very perfectly. This is very clearly hand-me-downs. Like his armor's all dented and rusted and clearly not good enough for the actual knight itself. It's just what's been left over. I like this. Also, the Can, can I nice. stop and comment on just on how awesome the horses actually look too? I yeah, agree. Right, what... If you click on the little video and like you know watch it do the little 360 thing... That horse mo model looks really good. I don't see a video. It's like the one, two, three, four, fi fifth image over. Weird. Why is it not coming up for me? Because it's Doesn't blocked it by Australian you. internet. <laughs> hmm, don't know. Yeah, there's, there's the picture of all three, then the individual pictures, and then the last one. It's like a gray. Like everything's exactly gray. three videos. Oh. If you click the little arrows, you can see the other two. Oh, hey, yeah, sure and, enough, there's three videos, Bruce. I can't even see one. Weird. Well, there's videos on the thing that you can see as well that I can't for some reason. Otherwise, I would try to the hold camera. your internet. Ooh, I didn't say that. Uh, okay. Moving on to a word that I don't know how to say. So for the Dwegum, we've got the the Nymnatsa. <laughs> it's M N E Nymnatsa. Um. So it's the Nymnatsa's apprentice. Apprentice is easy. Um. Again. Really love this. So for those that are not aware, the Dwegum are Men dwarves. Mancer? Sorry? Menmancer? Menmancer? Yeah, that could work. Yeah. Yeah, Menmancer. Yeah, I like that. Let's let's go with that. G g can I throw in a little complaint? If you're going to design a game and everything, don't make everything entirely hard to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I already have enough problems speaking you know, my, my, my primary language. <laughs> it does give the world of a, a, a feeling of being its own thing, but um, yeah, no, I no, can no, see where sure. you're coming from with that comment. Very much so. Um, so the Dwegum are the dwarves that are. It's like this is very much their own version of dwarves. These aren't even cold at all. Um, as opposed to you know being the same dwarves that everybody else has. So I, I like the fact that they're their own thing, kind of like our. Like, the orcs in this game are very unique as well. So the orcs are... Like, they still give that, like, that tribal feel and so forth, but they're very, very I different. love the fact that he's actually carving a stone pillar. And if you look, there are many mistakes on the stone pillar. Yep. Well, and the fact that he's... It's kind of, it almost looks like it's falling over as he's carving it, and he's holding it up with his foot. Yep. So, yeah, I really like this guy. Um, we've got a neophyte as well, which is back in the Hundred Kingdoms. I, I th this guy's kind of, he looks simple, but I'm actually saying this in a good way. I mean, you don't want him to be flashy when he's very clearly a priest of some kind. I like this mini quite a lot. Uh, I hate the fact that I would have to do that text because obviously I would have to do that text. I know that it's very easy to do, but I've always struggled doing text on things. 
I don't know about you guys. I know that it's only supposed to be dots and dashes, but it just never seems to work for me. But it's more like Morse code. Pretty much. Uh, but no, I just I don't have a steady hand, and it never seems to like. So, it just looks so like I've scribbled do, on things. What you do is you get yourself some printable uh, transfer paper. True, that's a good point. Print out your own little deal thing, and then you uh, transfer it on. That's a good point. I, I, I like that idea. Cheat, cheat is always the answer. And Why moving on to, you don't have to paint every little. Oh yeah. <laughs> Moving on to, for me personally, what is my favourite of the lot, uh, is the Tactical Retinues for the Hundred Kingdoms. So, Tactical Retinues are an option that you can add to your hero character that gives them extra abilities. And in theory, you're supposed to add things to the base to represent them that didn't exist. Up until now, it's just kind of been, look, just add something to it or just ignore it. It doesn't really matter. But now we're actually getting the minis to represent them. And these things are gorgeous. I really like these. There will be a video going through at some stage what the retinues are rules-wise and what they do for each force. I haven't gotten to that yet. Um, I really like this. Hey, this one actually has a video that I can watch. Hey. The other ones have videos too, Bruce. You just... I know, but they don't show up for me. I don't know why. You're in it. It's weird. So yeah, I, I really like that. Any thoughts on one of them being your favorite or anything? I like the guy holding the banner right here in this written package. Mm -hmm. As much as I said that this is my favorite, I'm now questioning whether I want to go back to the... Because I really do like those squires as well. The squires, those, yeah, th those horses look pretty re realistic and so those do look nice too. Yeah. I love the fact that the guy with the banner is standing on a red carpet. Right. Like, quite literally. Yeah. Because then it makes so much sense because this is where that comes from. Like, well, this is not... This is not history, but this is based in the point of history where that comes from. I'm going to go go have to go with the, the Mem answer. Just be, like, even dwarves don't have minis like this. Yeah. Like, they're always, you know, armored up, ready to go, ready to fight. No, nothing like that. Like, even, um, so Warhammer Fantasy, right? Probably the most prevalent, you know, mm -hmm. right? Their spellcasting guys. Yeah, they had a big freaking hammer, and they stood on an anvil. Yep. Like, they, they weren't, they didn't, you know, have stuff like this. I think that's just, it, it's it's a cool part of the, the game of, like, you know, he, he he's, he's actually doing this thing. Yeah. Yeah. If you like Conquest, and you want to add to the force that you already have, or maybe you want to buy in for the first time, then if you use Getting Tabled at, on the checkout, you'll get 10% off your order and support us as well. Check. And we appreciate it when you support us. Yes, yes, there has been a couple of people that's done that. It's been very helpful. Um, moving on to when I first saw this game described, I was like, I don't understand. But now that I've actually read this, I do understand. So we can talk about this. So Vampire the Masquerade, if you don't know what Vampire the Masquerade is, I have questions. Um, it was a video game. It was a role-playing game. Well, it is a role-playing game first. Uh, it's vampires. Like, it, that's that's all you really need to know. So it's also a it's also a card game too. I didn't know there was a card game. Yeah, it came out. Um, how old was I? I'm gonna really date myself here. Uh, well, you're 709 now. Bruce, you were 93 when it came out. <laughs> I want to say it was 93 when it came out, but it was called Jihad. Interesting. And it was it was based off of Vampire the Masquerade. It had the same same clans and stuff like that. Okay. Mm. But, uh, of course, you know, just like any other collectible card game out there, it got beat up by Magic the Gathering. Funny, that. There is actually companies that are surviving against Magic at the moment. Uh, Wizards are making that almost easy at the moment, in my opinion. Um, okay, so yeah, this no. <laughs> is not just a board game. This is a mega game. Now, they actually describe what a mega game is, quite frankly, because I think most people have never heard of them. Uh, I mean, I knew that they were a thing, but I didn't know they had a name. So this is kind of like... It's a large board game that involves anywhere from 4 to 32 people. It's not a typo. 32 people. 
So they're likening it to LARPs and uh, LAN parties would be the thing that comes to my mind. Not that anybody does those anymore. Um, and this is based in the world of Vampire the Masquerade. They've got specific roles for everybody. Groups of people that work together throughout the thing. Every round is based around about a 10 minute thing. The four basic rules is like there's a marketplace, there's a cityscape, there's orders, and there's the council. So there's lots and lots of different elements to this. There is role playing and story involved. This sounds really interesting. It's not something I would buy because I 100% would never get a chance to use this. Um, because I don't run conventions. I mean, you would need to be at a convention for this to work. Yeah. Well, you could play it with four people, but I get the feeling that this wouldn't feel as fun with four people when it's designed for so many. I don't know about you guys. I do love this so, idea. Though. This is a really cool concept. I like this. Here's the problem, though. Bruce, how many people are in your uh, D&D group? Four. How hard is it to get all four of you in the same room at the same time for four hours? Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that for 40 40 people, right? okay, so we'll just do do that for 40 people. Yeah, that's why I'm saying this is the sort of thing that you're going to be pulling out at a convention. At a con- yeah, you're right. If you don't, want to do the don't see it working otherwise. Or, check this out, right? You are either Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, and you hire... 40 people and pay them a living salary and then that's all you do is you show up to their house and you play this game 8 hours a day for a year with them. That (laughs) I suspect that this would be designed to kind of work as a once off type thing. I don't know. Um... Because normally, like Vampire, no, um, Ultimate Werewolf and stuff, which, which is one of the things that comes to mind with what they're trying to do here. Although you don't physically have things in that normally. Uh, but this, um, it, it's kind of the same game every time. It's just different people getting different roles. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine that that's how this would play. I don't know, it's got, like, this is just very simple at this stage. I do want to say, I love this background. It's really cool. Um, well, yeah. Interesting Four to see to how this goes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, this I don't is, even the downside of this is, like. it's, well, look, <laughs> this is going to be something that's going to be for a very niche audience. Yeah. Uh, like, you're, well, not, no, you're, sure. not, you're not selling millions of copies of this. But I do think this will do very well. Um, but the problem with designing a mega game is either people are going to buy this without thinking about it and then realise that they don't really get a chance to play with that many people, or it's people that are running conventions or want to host this at conventions. Because um, normally, with uh, it does actually touch on this, like normally when you run things at conventions and stuff like this, there's usually like... Like a ticket entry type thing. Yeah, so I was, I was it's just about to say, you know, it's business. You know, your FL, be. yeah, your local gaming store picks up a copy of this and then sells like you know, we'll call it a thirty dollar ticket. Pizza is provided, and you show up and you play this game with thirty some people. Yeah, and then that covers pizza and beverages. It covers the 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 manpower for the the employee to be there and. You know, it'd be no different than like you know a movie theater showing, you know. Yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. just it's interactive. Like I said, I I found this very interesting. I thought it was worth looking at. Um, but let's have a look to see what our friends at TT Combat are up to. Some new drop zone stuff. Yep. TT Combat. Uh, TT know, Combat um, are that company that hire a CGI person just to create a fictional character called Lewis. Yeah, okay. Wait, is that Lewis or Lewis? Uh, or Lewis Louis. or Louis. You ruined my bru- joke, Bruce. No, I know. Not. <laughs> it's St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> um, okay, so we're completely ignoring the terrain. 
for people that are wondering why we're completely ignoring it, we spoke about it like three episodes ago. Because it features in the white boxes. And I have unboxings of this coming up in the very near future. Because I own it and it's sitting in a box. Over there. But. Mine was delayed by the weather yesterday. Fair enough. We do, however, have the armoured battle groups finally coming out. We did know that these things were coming. But there's also some individual ships that we did not know were coming. But we're not going to talk so about those now. We're talking about them later. Exactly, right? What was that, sorry? Oh, is that true? These are new starter boxes, essentially, right? They're add-ons. They're add-ons for yeah. the existing. It's oh, not okay. a true starter box. It's more like a you add another battle group or, or something like that. So you you can you, you get this with your uh, starter box. Got it. Yes. Well, yeah, you, you, because you, I, you buy your starter box and then you add this to the force to diversify it. Ooh. I think George has it now. So it's an expansion, George. No, 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 no. No, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at minis. Yeah. Okay. I think he's so looking the... at the Scourge ones. Probably. Let's no. Have a look. No. Shelter. Which one? No. Resistance. No. Who are you looking at? The Vulture Dropship for the UCM. Oh yeah. Is that Those one of the? Those are cool. Is that the individual one? That's yeah. the top ship that carries oh, it's the you, you do what you're doing, Bruce. I can. Ignore me. Well, so as Bruce mentioned, we're going to be talking about this here in a, in a little bit. We're going to go over all the rules for for at least the ground units. The vulture drop ships, I don't remember seeing the rules for the vultures. We will oh, have no, a look. They are in there. They are in there. I'm just looking at okay. them right now. So, so we, will look at, we will discuss more in detail each of these five units, six units here in a minute. But so, they, these do look. Sorry, go ahead, Bruce. So you've got some polecat buggies. You've got twin nemesis. Well, so that have mini guns uh, or aggressor cannons. You've got vulture dropships, which is what George is salivating over. Um, and you've got a couple of tanks and then a big giant airplane in there as well, which is gorgeous. So this is not what we're covering in rules wise, just for the record. In the Scourge, you get another big series of dropships. Uh, you do get some new stuff in here as well. And this is where I realised. So, the rules things that we are covering. Ah, I just realised something. My battle armour comes with the things that we're covering later. I didn't even realise that. Hey, I learned things. Um, in that one, we have four Spectre Skirmy Tanks. Uh, we have a Harbinger dropship, a Savage, uh, sorry, uh, two Corsair interceptors. So lo lots of really nice, really sexy things because it's Scourge. And then I suppose if you wanted to look at the PHR, there is a PHR one. I mean, nobody really wants the PHR. Uh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was so, yeah, way the... too easy. Yeah, um, no, in the PHR, you get four Diana Jet Skimmers, the new uh, units. Yep. You get two Erebos, you get a, uh, two Odin Walkers, and then you get a Neptune Dropship. So, pretty nice little PHR setup. That Neptune Dropship, I honestly think is one of the best-looking things in their force. It is Just gorgeous. I have about four or five of them in my force, and they are nice. Uh, and then for the Sheltari... We have lots of cheating minis because they're Shaltari and they're horrible and everybody hates them. Um, you... Let you play them. Yeah. Uh, you've got three Alanti Grav Tanks. Uh, you've got a Puma Sonic War Strider, which is the big thing. Uh, you also have an Eden Gate, which I think is the flyer thingy. That's the flyer. Yep. yep. And what's the big thing uh, on the bottom? The, uh, I'm looking for it. Plus you get whatever this thing is called. The alligator. Oh, that's the alligator. Okay, yep, cool. It's hard, It was hard to read in the text. Was, and and the alligator is like, oh, okay. That's, that's what it is. That's because, the alligator. Because it's only called an alligator and that kind of... It's like, oh, 
With that throws everything off. It'll, it'll see you later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, we have the Resisty. And I'm saying Resisty just to make George happy. The Resisty! Yeah. So, this also has some new stuff. These two small vehicles down the bottom are among the stuff that we're going to be covering later. Uh, we have arguably what might be my favourite general mini in the game up the top here, those two airships. So mm -hmm. you've got two Patton ATVs, which is the things on the bottom. Uh, you've got a Napoleon heavy tank, which is this huge thing. Uh, you've got two Zukos, uh, which is the tanks to the left. Yep. And you've got and two lift half drop six, which are like just gorgeous. There's two or three different versions of these ships because there is like assault versions and stuff as well. Uh, but this design, I think, might be among my favourites of the game. Who designs okay. a dropship with anti-aircraft guns on the dropship? Oh wait, the Resistance do. Yeah, of course they do. Why, so why so, would you not do that? I know. Do you guys want to see what I was laughing about? Okay. So go to the fourth image with the Resistance uh, Battle Group. And you've got the two little wheeled vehicles, right? Yep. The yeah. one on the bottom with the double barrels. If you look at the barrels with as eyeballs with pupils, and then it's a face of like, Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> okay, I can't, uns I can't unsee that now. Yep. <laughs> right. Oh, I saw funny. that. He's just like, oh no. <laughs> so, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. And his mouth. And he's either got a big cheesy grin or a big surprise face, depending on which way you look at it. Yeah. Well, considering their scourge running around, it's most likely probably a surprise face. <laughs> Depends on whether they're winning or not. They could be really happy about winning. <laughs> it's true. Alright, moving on as I wipe sweat out of literally my eyes. God, that stinks. <sighs> Sorry, folks. I'm um, not allowed to turn my fan on to try and keep myself cool. All right. We also have a work in progress tease. So we did kind of see a tease of these in the advent calendar a little while ago, but we've got actual completed things going on now. And these are some new cutters that are coming for the PHR in Dropship... Sorry, Drop Fleet Commander. Um, I really like these. Like really, you like those. I uh, really like this. I, I I play Shaltari. I'm a fan of the Shaltari aesthetic. That Shaltari ship, the one that's going, looks, the one that's going on an adventure. Oh going my adventure. goodness, that thing looks gorgeous. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, I always love what they're up to, but the, yeah, these things are absolutely stunning. Uh, any preferences between the two? I assume that you're just going to pick the ones from your own factions. Oh, no, I was going to say the UCM one looks pretty good. Oh, I was talking about yeah, the drop, the drop set, yeah, the drop fleet. Fleet. Yeah, so no. was I. Because <laughs> it's got a clerking device. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's weird though, because that's, it's normally a scourge thing, the clerking. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, they stole it. They did. I you like my deep color, Bruce. Sorry. Oh, like very nice. Detail? Very you nice. Like that? Oh, I do. I do. I wonder who bought that for you. No, oh, really swell guy. Um, I think the <laughs> Shaltari is the winner aesthetically in my eyes. Anyway, I do like them both, but yeah, the the Shaltari is the winner for me. I, I like them both, and as a PHR player, yeah, I'm gonna. I I kind of like the Shaltari one a little bit better, actually. Oh, I, I honestly thought you were gonna go the other way. Uh, there's well, no, there's no bad sculpts in this. This is like this no. is all gorgeous. So, well, let's look back here, right? You know, what's the PHR known for? Long, smooth, flat holes that you can yeah. just do beautiful and amazing things with. Yeah, and then you have the very. Um, frustrating and textured and 
there's not a flat surface on them Shaltari. And yeah. for once, I'm okay with that surface not being flat and having all you that texture. Do the all... I'll beat you. <laughs> <laughs> in a baseball bat. <laughs> Covered in barbed wire. So, folks, Over here, Glenn. that is George promising that he's going to do all of the dots. You've got to remember that and hold it, hold him to what that promise he made is. <laughs> he told he told that the mini he was going to beat it, and that means that he's going to do all of the dots. That's exactly what he meant. <laughs> all right, moving on. Okay, we're going to talk about Dave Taylor's next adventure, uh, which means we're skipping part past the art of. We're not talking about that. That's not new at all. But... His next Kickstarter that he's running... So, Dave Taylor does a lot of Kickstarters where he helps people launch things, as opposed to them being his own product, per se. Um, I'm, I'm not belittling what he does. Like, he actually does a very good job of it. Uh, he's the one that helped Mel get his book done, uh, and they kind of worked together through to get it all done. He's doing it this time with... Now, I've lost the name. Jeff Hall... Um, who's been a DM for a very long time, apparently, and they're making the tremendous tome of decorating dungeons. My only thing is, I think they could have made that name just a little bit more difficult to say. I didn't stutter once when I said that. They need to work I, harder I on the it, name. I think it's fine. I love... Oh, I love the name. I'm just being a smartass. Um, so this will be hitting on February 10th. So it's only a couple of weeks away. So this entire book is basically on painting 3D dungeon terrain, making dungeon terrain. It's all about like sculpting and making the things that you normally are paying quite a lot of money for, quite frankly. Uh, honestly, I think this is going to do very well. Yeah. Because um, this is becoming a, a really big part of the D&D hobby, is building your own scenery. Yeah. Or, or buying, I mean... Wiz Kids has their own little dungeon sets. Dwarven Forge has their own dungeon sets. But I could see this becoming really big with people wanting to do it on their own. Yeah. As well. I, I could tell you probably at least 20, 30 times, you know, sitting at the, the, the gaming store, you know, painting minis, working on stuff, and having, you know, ages 12 to, you know, 40, you know, like, Hey, you're really going to paint this stuff. I, I've got this D and D mini I, I want to paint up. You know, like, how do you do that kind of stuff? You know, yeah. It's 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 become a thing where you know people people want to do this to to make their their D and D experience so much better. Yeah. As far as you know. And thankfully, the hobby has moved away from the gatekeeping that it used to have. Yeah. Just... There's, a, there's a guy that I used to play Star Wars Legion with back when I was up in St. Louis area, and he has his own. Um, startup company. He's trying to p do comm painting commissions and stuff like that. But at the local game store that we played at, every Sunday for a few hours, he's there to teach people how to paint minis. Yep. And he has his own stuff that he's bringing, whether it's for commission or his own stuff that he's he's painting. And so he helps people, which I think is cool. It needs to yeah. happen because or else the, the hobby's not going to grow. Agreed. Agreed. And, and quite frankly, like if you're not doing that side of it, it's going to be very hard to make business too. Yeah, um, because generally speak, generally speaking, people want to be able to see that you're giving back and not just taking all the time. Gen generally mm -hmm. speaking, um, all right. Shall we discuss an indie? Indie <sighs> definition: independent type, slang word, jargon. Wasn't there a new version of that? There was. No. No. I'm no, not sure. Coming event one. Uh, I, I'm not training that one. That, I think that one's too good. No, I just I remember there was a new thing, and I, I and well, people know that there's a new thing coming now, unless George didn't do it. All right, George found this this morning for me, um, and I was I woke up and my immediate reaction was, "This is really cool." Uh, I'm going to change what we're discussing. Uh, I just want to. Yeah, so the actual terrain is made by a company called Mad Gaming Terrain but they sell it exclusively through what I think might be the best name for a hobby store I've ever heard of. 4TK Gaming. That's really clever. And there's absolutely nothing that James Workshop can do about it. 
because it's the number four, <laughs> it's the number T, sorry, the letter T and the letter K. 40K gaming. That is so clever. Um, okay. So the one that caught my attention that was like, whoa, well, that's cool. Um, scrolling down here, because I saw this on Facebook, so I, I, yes. I didn't look on their website, but it's the Future Gothic kit. Which is down the, much further down oh, the bottom somewhere. Scrolling. Oh, yeah. Like, it, as I'm scrolling here, you're starting to get an idea of just how much stuff these guys have. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say from a negative point of view, and I suspect that they do this because they're probably connected to them in some way, but they're limiting their audience by only selling through one store. Um... I don't know how much it would cost for us to buy this stuff. I assume that it would, the postage would be reasonable. The UK usually is. Um, but they do limit themselves a little bit. I can't find it. Oh, well, I'm going to scroll back. Sure. And I'm going to go into the tournament board. Because this is 7650. And includes a full board of gorgeous looking terrain. I love the fact that these ruins are not just single layer standard 40k buildings. Like, they have the same templates, but some of them are built so that they're larger and they feel like they definitely were big buildings back in the day, as opposed to ruins that don't really make a lot of sense a lot of times with 40k stuff. And it's not just a carbon copy of the gothic look. They've definitely gone for a look of their own. Uh, which I have to praise them for. Because it's not easy to find. I mean this feels straight out of 40k. But there's not a single skull. There's not a single. Um, gothic. Gothic arch. armor piece at all. It, it feels gothic. But it's yeah. not gothic architecture. I really like yeah. what they've done with this. I mean, This you, feels you like an yeah. You could trim off some of the tabs on some of those larger buildings and it would almost look World War Two European style Germany True, actually. Russian like Eastern Bloc. Yeah. Eastern Bloc, exactly. You just trim a, a few of the pieces off at the bottom of those little the little flanges that are flaring out at the bottom. Yep. And it would look Eastern Bloc. And you could this that feels in. like a futuristic version of the buildings that we do now. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah. Um I really, really want to praise them for that because it's a really n nice to see somebody actually thinking outside of the box. Um, these walkways and so forth that they're selling, I'm not going to open those up to look at them closer. But again, like they feel like they fit. They very much are their own thing. But you can magnetize most of these kits rather than having to glue everything so that you can actually keep everything actually... Modular, as opposed to having to put it together and losing some of that detail. Uh, I love the stairways. Simple, but very effective. And I like the fact that it's not just a straight, or it's not just an angled one. You can buy one or the other, or both. Because most terrain companies tend to either just design something that's a straight staircase, or they only do one that's the other way. These guys are doing both and just leaving it there for you to make your own choices. Which makes it feel more real world to me. Because most cities don't only have one sort of staircase. I really like what these guys have done. This is very, very gorgeous. Uh, they also do a lot of terrain that fits in with Infinity. Like, as much as I'm talking about 40k, because clearly that's what the audience is. Uh, <laughs> you could, as long I'm as really it's sci fi, the there's. <laughs> look, as much as it's sci fi. There's no reason why this couldn't fit anything sci-fi. It just oh yeah no just feels like it yeah. works. Uh, I'm going to quickly go to their upgrade kits, and these are upgrade kits for their existing things. A lot of these are for the hab blocks. So there's one up the top here that is an upgrade for their gothic stuff, which is what we were obviously just looking at, which. Adds a few design elements to their existing buildings. They've got ones for the hab blocks. So that you can stack buildings on top of each other. And actually create the 
colony type things where everything is on top of each other. Uh, there's other ones where you kind of thicken out the building and make them more bigger, I suppose. Uh, there's an upgrade to the bunkers that beef up the armor and everything. There's some really nice, well thought out stuff here. I really like what they've done. Yeah, like I said, the, the thing that I saw when I was scrolling through Facebook was was the gothic buildings, and I was like, for MDF, that looks amazing. Yeah. I am going to open that up for the people to see at home. This is directly on their Facebook and is not a live product yet. But for those that are just listening, it's very much a gothic architecture church. Again, there's no skulls in sight. There is some spikes there on the top of the arches. Uh, it's kind of a mixture of squares and triangles. and uh, it, Again, it feels like it's their own thing. You can see what their inspiration was. Uh, the windows, like the top of the actual arched windows, have cogs in them, which kind of feels like it belongs. Uh, and it's huge. Like, this is a huge building. I love that. Like, that, that's a centerpiece of a table right there. I really love what they're doing. Um, shall we move on? Yes. What, what are we moving on to? Oh, yeah. Hobby. Socks, what have you been up to? Even though I already Quite know the answer to this. Quite a bit, actually, because I already showed Bruce this. But uh, the last few days, uh, I've been painting up some uh, Star Wars Legion stuff because I'm part of a Star Wars Skirmish League at my local game store where we play about 500 points worth of stuff. But last couple of days, I was painting up some BT Battle Droids, probably one of the easiest units that I have ever painted because I just pretty much base coated those with lead belcher and then did some known oil highlights and whatnot and just a few things elsewhere but other than that that was so you painted yeah. necron yeah pretty much because because that's how you paint necrons lead belcher and mill and oil and then highlights yeah and then a dwarf spider that you see in episode two in the battle of genosis And then that big guy, the persuader that, tank. That's definitely my favorite. I love that thing. So, well, so we'll it's have... it's really easy to love that one, especially when you uh, you know show off the the little spider tank thing before it, because I like the spider tank thing. Oh my god. I, I'm not going to sit here and, and badmouth Star Wars because Star Wars is great, but some of the things that have, you know, and I'm not even going to say a specific, you know, character. I'm just, the Gungans in general. Some of the droids that they chose, like, why? I mean, okay, sure, it fits for the story and everything, but yeah. why? I, I, th I don't <laughs> think that there'd be many, many people that would argue with you that the vehicles in the original movies were more interesting than the vehicles in the prequels. Um, part of the problem there is that you're, have, you're restricted by having to make sense with how they evolve. But yep. in saying that, I like the Gungans. As a race, yeah. the, Gung the Gungans are... I, I love the Gungans. I completely yeah. understand the issues with the Gungans. Uh, but as a race, I love the way that they were fleshed out. The only problem is that Jar Jar was used too much. And therefore, he sours people's taste. That's my feeling. It's, yeah, I, was, I was trying to avoid saying, you know, Jar Jar. Like, well, it's pretty obvious who you were talking about. Actually, so... <laughs> um, little... Uh, uh, on topic, uh, side note. So, who's watched uh, story of or the book of Boba Fett? Nope. 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 Socks. I need to. I need to, but I haven't seen it. We couldn't find okay, our Apple TV. Maybe we'll talk about it because spoilers. Yeah. Sorry. 
I, I'm, I will be planning on starting out here, but the, the nice thing about the Jory, the George Schweinberg, going back to what George doesn't like, is I can interchange his weapons. So I designed it and built him so I can interchange his various weapons because he comes with three different weapons. So I can. Oh, nice. Nice. You know, interchange it. On the, on the one hand, though, with the simplicity design of that of that you know droid, it makes it to you know to do something like that extremely easy. Yeah. No, like oh, I have to like heavily modify this in order to swap the gun between the the, the two guns. Oh, that's that's terrible. There's actually three of them, so I could I have three different options depending on what I build on my list. So. Well, no, I was talking about like say you know like my Redemptor Dreadnought for my Space Wolves. Yeah. Like the flamer or the bolter, I'd have to seriously modify the arm in order to go f swap the weapons. Either one. So I didn't. <laughs> yeah. What have you been up to, George? Um, I he says suddenly, suddenly putting things behind him. <laughs> I, uh, I I built some more terrain um, from the Nihilus uh, complex set that I started, um, and then finished uh, building a couple pieces. I will. Wheel back here and get one. All right, looks pretty nice. Uh, each little foot here is one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Just the foot. <laughs> That's crazy. That sounds like a Malify kit. There's eight feet per one, and there's two of them. Um, it, it, the only difficult part was like, okay, so you got these tabs that slide into these panels. Yep. But then you have tabs that go this way into this panel. So which do you start first? Do you start down here and then slide on top and then you have no way to get these uh, tabs lined up? Or do you put the tabs in here first and then you try to line all of these up? Well, I think the way That's that you point. did it was probably the smarter way, which was build the middle of it first and then put the top on. Um, well, no, so, so this is a different thing because all oh, the that's footage not from me that's these, not the one from the video. No, no, all oh, the footage okay. building this got lost. The one from the video. Oh, it's that one. Okay. Yeah, okay. because these have a tab top and bottom that just slide on. This is a tab on the bottom and then tab on the top. Yeah. So I couldn't go this way. Or I go this way, and then I have to spread all... And yeah, so... That was a little annoying. Um, yeah, no, unfortunately, the, the building of this and uh, its its twin... Um, yeah, the footage didn't actually get recorded, so... Yeah. Yeah. But I did something. I did something, though. I did a thing. That's good. It's more thing than I've done the, all last year, pretty much. So, hobby-wise, the hobby that I have achieved is not in front of me, it's out in the other room, but I have started um, undercoating some of my stuff, uh, I've undercoated some more of my conquest, because there's a painting tutorial that I've promised people that's still not done yet. Uh, and what do I'm you mean, priming? Isn't that what I said? You said undercoating. Oh, I, it's the same thing. Um, undercoating is something a car, a car dealership tries to rip you off on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have undercoated a new mini to do that tutorial with. Um, heat is probably still going to delay that a little bit. And I've also primed the um, some of my Moonstone stuff um, so I can start getting some paint on those as well. So... Is that the one you were asking about wind for? That is one of the ones I was asking about wind for, yeah. Uh, um, one of the minis has like a swirling magical thing around them that you could paint a number of different ways. One of the obvious ones would be water, but I really didn't want to do that because it's not what I wanted to do. My original idea was to try and do something sparkly and make it look like magic. And then I realised that there's leaves in it. I'm like... No, I should just paint that for what it is. It's very clearly wind. How do I paint wind? So the first person I... I had kind of had this idea of still kind of doing it blue, but doing like really pale blue so that it didn't look like water, even though it probably still would look like water. Um, but I asked my housemate, and his response was... And the question I asked was, if you was trying to paint wind, how would you paint it? And his response was, I wouldn't paint it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's very helpful. Thank you very much. 
Uh, George's idea in the end was to kind of go with like a cream colour and then highlight it white, which is the current idea that I'm working with. Because um, if you go with cream, obviously you don't want to go too dark, because if you go too dark, it's going to potentially look like sand. Or storm clouds. Or storm clouds, yeah. Which would still, but yeah. Um, and yeah, the we're, idea we're... that Sox had was to maybe add a little bit of the pale blue to help. The good idea with starting cream will be is that I can still do that and it won't look weird. Plus, it's a good opportunity to test a paint that I said I wanted to test. Because I have some whites and some yellows that I have been wanting to test. Because whites and yellows tend to be the worst thing from this product line. So, yeah, that's so, what I'm going to do. So, this is what I'm talking about for color contrast there, Bruce. Yep. The, the, um, this one is the white. And this is called... And this is scale 75. This is called birch. So, I mean, if you look at that, there is... It would just be the subtlest difference, which... That's all you would want to try to do is just... You want to be subtle. Yeah. I yeah. am going to be using some AK Interactive 3rd Edition paint for it. Uh, and I, I do have it nearby but it's underneath a whole heap of stuff so I'm not going to grab it because everything will fall over but this is where I have to go to my camera thing and turn off is there anything in view no nope, nothing is in view apart from my towels and stuff turn off my blurring hey look I didn't make my bed okay so first things first I don't remember if I showed this on camera last time or not but I have the full range of the air paints from um, Army Painter, which I intend to do an unboxing and an actual test for. Yeah, you got a ridiculous deal on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like less than $3 a pot. It was ridiculous. I also have Shadow something. It's the Shadow Battle Cruiser. So this is the only one of the Scourge fleet that I haven't owned yet, because this is the new thing. Well, it was when I bought it. I'm sure that they'll come up with something next week that I don't own. As part better... of my order, because I ordered a, a, quite a number of stuff, I got both of the free minis that we spoke about. So there's one that was like a zombie that was holding a bowl full of brains. Is it brains? I think it's a bowl full of brains. And the other one is like a sci-fi delivery guy type man. And... I bought something that Lewis told me I had to own and was very disappointed. In our interview, he had a go at us for not owning certain things. So, I officially own Traffic Jams. <laughs> so, you can't have a go at me, Lewis. I own Traffic Jams. Uh, there will definitely be an unboxing of this. I know this has been out for a while, but I'm still going to go through it. Because there's a couple of things I want to point out. And then, avoiding that box... Oh, this is heavy. Is it up the right way? It is. That's a pure miracle. So, this is why we wasn't covering that terrain set. Because I'm... Oh, my camera's doing weird things. <laughs> I thought you were holding it closer to your camera. <laughs> my camera's doing that focusing on my face thing. <laughs> which is a really awesome feature. If I want it to do that. But I don't want it to do that right now. <laughs> Um, I, it, it's like you actually had a cameraman, like actually, like you know, focusing in. in on you know. It's, I I thought you were sitting there going like this, like you know, hey, check it out, look, look, yeah, look. look. Uh, why can't I find it? There's a setting to make it do that. Okay, there we go. So I have dressings ranch which is the one that I said I wanted because I felt like I could do more with this than I could with the town that essentially would have just been one thing. It's not that I don't love the town. The town arguably has some buildings that I prefer, but I can do more with this. Plus, this is a dice tower. I mean, screw everything. It's a piece of terrain that's a dice tower. And Michelle, just for the record, you should watch and listen to our stuff more often. I know that you watched the episode that we were talking about this, and you still shared it, getting me to talk about it. I found that quite hilarious. Yeah. 
That was pretty funny. Hey, you guys, you should talk about this. They already did. Yeah, like three <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> like three year. episodes ago. Okay. You should have said we talked about it last year. I should have. I, did, I didn't think about that. Now, George, <laughs> how many of our conversations about the secret game do you remember? Malifor? No, no. Moon, Moonstone. Moonstone. Oh, Moonstone. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. I was but thinking before, your game with Malifaux. You you had a guess of something that you thought it was, and I told you no at one point. Do you remember what it was? No. No, not at all. Rumble Slam? No, I already own Rumble Slam. It was Count of Arle. Oh. 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 oh god, that box looks nice. It this is their two player starter set. Stop reflecting. That artwork looks amazing. It does look nice. This is one of the best value sets in the industry right now, I believe. Uh, there is actually two different starter sets that you can buy, um, each that comes with different things. I bought the larger of the two because that's the one that I wanted to show off. To some extent, I've bought that for content. Uh, the other thing is, is that I want to start doing some live streaming later in the year. And so I'm kind of trying to get things that I can do on that. Uh, so I did that. And I bought the Dracula set for the Str oh, nice. Strigoi. Which is just all kinds of pretty. Um, so, Dracula. One, two, three wives. I don't know why Dracula always has three wives, but he always has three wives for some reason. Uh, and I don't remember who this guy is. Uh, I will be going through an unboxing of this set. Uh, this set was raised in our Carnivale group recently because somebody noticed an error on the website where the website was saying that this is a fully legal team, but it's not. Um, but during my unboxing of this this week, I will be telling you exactly how to fix this to make it legal. That's my hobby. Very nice. Talk nerdy to me. All right. I well, we hinted at this earlier. I should probably turn my blur back on. Um. So we are going to be talking about the new things that are coming out this week, rather than specifically just talking about whatever the next thing was on the list. Let's actually cover the new stuff while it's new. So. I'm going to start with the UCM because we have the Polecat buggies. Um, so the Polecat the Polecat buggy has a nine-inch move. It's got active countermeasures. It's got an armor of twelve. Uh, it's got one damage point, and it's a tank. There's nothing special about it. Uh, it does have a, an aggressor cannon. There's nothing on its move and fire. Uh, its arc is front and side. It's got a 12-inch full range, 12-inch counted range. It's got three shots, three plus, energy seven, and it's got a focus two. Alternatively, you've got twin Nemesis miniguns that still doesn't have anything on move and fire. It's still got a front and side arc, but this has a 16-inch full range and an eight-inch counted range. Six shots at three plus. This has cover, uh, body soft, and it's got a focus of one. So this is giving you the ability to cover your stuff while you're like you're, you're distracting the enemy with these guns, basically. Um, it has an energy... It's energy for it. It actually shoots through... So cover is... If there's infantry up against the building, oh, the, okay. this Sorry. weapon can shoot through the cover and soft cover, the body cover and soft cover, to actually negate some of the penalties that those covers give you. So it's actually pretty effective at shooting at infantry that are inside the building as long as they're up so cool thank you very much for correcting me on that not yep. having played the game having played i the would game. paint these black with a white stripe if i if i were to play ucm and field these why because polecat is west western slang for skunk ah so the first thing that came to my head was um halo personally no no, no that's Wolverine's a rumor 
Yes, I know. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Polecat is a, a a Western slang term for a skunk. Okay, I didn't actually know that. Um, we also do have the rules here for the Vulture Dropship, which has an 18-inch move, active countermeasures, armor 10, damage points of 2, and it's an aircraft type, because, you know, it's an aircraft. Uh, it's got twin Gatling cannons, no move and fire, front arc, 24-inch range, full, 12-inch countered, 4 shots, 4 plus accuracy, and 3 energy, nothing special. Or there's an A8 battery, which has a 8-inch move and fire, front, side, and rear, 36-inch full, 9-inch countered, 2 shots at 3 plus, 6 energy, which is AA2. Do you know what the AA does off the top of your head? Anti-aircraft. Okay, yeah, that would make sense. Anti-aircraft yeah. uh, value of 2. That's right, because we were talking about that earlier. Yep. Um, George. And the cool to... Oh, sorry, yep. So with this being a dropship, this can carry four polecats or four wolverines, which are the smaller buggies uh, that the UCM have. So that's kind of pretty cool that they have another dropship with these new... I like the um, fact that they've designed the things in the box to actually work together. Yeah, I agree. Because quite often things like that just are random things so that they can sell them. No, I'm just generally, mm -hmm. generally speaking about the industry. I'm not pointing any fingers here. Um, George, do you want to cover the UCM stuff? Oh, sorry, not the UCM the, stuff. The Scourge the, stuff. The Scourge stuff. Please. Yeah. Um. The the Spectre Skimmer Tank. Uh. Great name, by the way. Yep. Uh. It's got a move of twelve. Countermeasures of A E plus three. Armor of eleven. Damage point one. And it's a skimmer. Yep. Um. It's got a plasma lance. Uh. No move. Fire value. Uh, front arc, 18-inch range uh, for for both uh, regular air... Uh, um, Full the, and counter. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, one shot, 3+, uh, 10 energy. Devastator 2, infantry and scenery. So this is potentially very nasty. Yeah, if you shoot infantry or in scenery, you're pretty much doubling your damage, in a sense. There we go. Okay, and then Photon Blaster. Uh, same profile, front, uh, nine for both uh, uh, options of fire, two shots, three up, uh, six energy, indirect. And... So I'm, I'm going to assume based off uh, the way the grudge throwers worked in Warhammer Fantasy, you don't have to have line of, line of sight on something to shoot at it, actually. Yeah. Um, it always does damage to targets on a roll or a five or a six. Which is yep. quite nice. Um, is that it for the Scourge? Yeah, that's, that's it for, it for the, the scourge. scourge. So we're moving into the drones for the PHR. Yep. So we have the Diana Jump Skimmer. Um, so you got a move value of 8. Countermeasure is active as well as uh, evasive plus 2. You have 13 armor, 1 damage point, and it's also a skimmer as well. Um, you've got a molecular absorber, uh, no move and fire value, front side rear arc, 24 inch full, 18 inch countered, one shot, two plus accuracy, energy eight, devastator three against vehicles, and also can focus three. So pretty good at killing vehicles, but then if you get all three of your shots um, hit, you can actually have an energy 17 shot. Because for each shot you take away, you can give, you can increase your energy by three. So that's how the focus works. Oh, okay. Um, so it's I should have asked that earlier so about the other ones. Yeah, so it's pretty, pretty nasty. Um, by that, so it almost becomes the heaviest hitting weapon in the game if all three of your weapons and rolling a two plus, other than Bruce rolling, you're gonna pretty much hit all the time. Most this, of it. This would almost be good for me. Almost. Yeah, it would. Have. Almost. Um, and then you also have a shield beamer. Um, the option to take a shield beamer, which I think is, is pretty cool. Um, so you have a front side rear arc on this. No move fires. 18-inch uh, range for full. 12-inch range uh, for countered. One shot. Accuracy 3+. plus. No energy and no special. Well, how this one works is each time the weapon hits, 
every unit in the targeted unit squad in coherency either increases or decreases its pass passive countermeasures by one until the end of the round. So a unit without passive countermeasures will gain a six plus countermeasure until the end of the round. So I think it's kind of cool. It's a kind of a mobile shield that the PHR now have. Um, so the Shaltari are not the only ones that have a shield in the sense because Shaltari at the time were the only ones that really had a shield. The energy absorbers. Um, the one thing you can do with this as well is the unit, if the unit, the squad, they choose not to shoot. And if it does, the remaining unit in coherency in line of sight of its shield beamer instead increases or decreases the power passive countermeasures by two instead of one. So it boosts their energy up if they are in line of sight as well as coherency. So I it's pretty nice. think this is a must take. You cannot not like this has to be in your force. I yeah, I, I, would I don't see how you could avoid that. That that's just too good. I I would almost say you you'd want to take a couple of each. Um, that way you have that mobile shield, but then if you have that focus fire and you hit with everything, you're you're crippling vehicles, pretty much. Yeah, that's so, really nice. It is either one. George. So. Yeah, next on the list, um, and, and I'm just reading straight off the website here, so this is not me being biased in any way at all. Shaltari aren't happy with that silly PHR nonsense. So here's two new units to put them back in their place. Um, the the ATL, ATL. Atlanta. No, it's ATL, like Atlanta, Atlanta. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, grab tank, move is six inches, countermeasures active, E plus two, P four plus, um, twelve armor, one damage. It's a skimmer. Um, got a couple things here though. Um, so teleport beamer, uh, front side rear, twelve inch range for both, one shot, four up, no energy value, nothing special about it. But it's called a teleport beamer. This unit can choose to target a friendly or enemy units, but not units in the same squad. Senior pieces and behemoths cannot be targeted. If this weapon hits, it does no damage, but every unit targeted in this uh, targeted unit squad in coherency must teleport. Move friendly units up to 6 inches per hit, or enemy units up to 3 inches per hit. This does not count as moving for the purpose of moving fire. This unit must be placed in coherency, although may be placed fa placed facing any direction and ignore all scenery in the path of the move, although it must be placed on passable terrain. It's easiest to roll all hits first and then teleport the squad a total distance in one go. Remember, always ask your opponent to move their own miniatures. I really like the fact that they included that last line because I think that's actually quite important. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, unless it's like one of you know one of the guys who's like you know constantly handing me his stuff to like hey check this out or yeah. you know what yeah. I don't ever touch someone else's mini unless I'm you know they've explicitly told me go ahead and move my stuff or you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, the next this, this this is oh sorry yes. Th there's another one. <laughs> there, more Shalt Nanigans. <laughs> Yeah. Energy Storm. Uh, front side rear. Uh, eight for both ranges. Two shots. Uh, four plus. Energy six. Special is AA-0. Sorry, AA. Yeah. Is that zero or D? I can't. It's, it's a zero. It's like a zero. It's a zero. Okay. Interference. This unit may not make shooting actions, but may, but may reaction fire against aircraft without the usual reaction fire accuracy penalty. Energy Storm. When firing this weapon, add plus one energy for every other friendly unit in the squad within coherency. Yeah. Um, again, Pretty effective against anti-aircraft, but I almost would take that teleport beamer. I agree. Because of being able to move, being able to move your units out of line of shot sight before they get shot at after they've activated... Or pull your enemy into line of sight before a heavier unit of yours is about to shoot and fire. That's hey, just soft, and then, what, what's that? that one Shaltari Walker with the big gun that goes through anything? Um, 
I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head, but I know exactly but, what you're about. Yeah, so shoot one of their things and push it so it's in line of sight of that cannon. Yeah, exactly. I would argue that this is a must-take, and this is another one that I would say you probably want more than one set of these. Especially when you can point them in the opposite direction. Yeah. Or any direction, right. for that matter. So, oh, so yeah, you're now, in, you're now in line. Oh, 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 when you're facing the wrong way, which means I'm fighting at you from behind. Yeah, exactly. And in order for you to turn around, if you don't have a turret, you're going to have to actually move and fire and turn turn yourself around. And it may affect your shooting accuracy if you have to move in order to turn That's around. That's some straight-up Looney Tune stuff right there. Oh, yeah. I love that so much. And now we finally move to the Mr. Smiley Face vehicles. <laughs> also, it just occurred to me to what intellectual property you would see a, a, a face like that in. Yes. Thomas the Train and Friends. Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, what do you mean I'm going to war, Thomas? So the Thomas Patton ATV, sorry, AFV, uh, moves six inches. So he's not quite as fast as Thomas, but that's okay. He's trying. Um, countermeasures are active, 13 armor, 2 damage points, and it's a tank type. It has an auto cannon, which is front, side, and rear. 36 inches full, 18 inches counted, 2 shots at 3 plus, energy 8, and it's got a special of cover all, which I would argue is very nasty. Uh, you've also got grenade launchers, which is front only. 18 inch full, 6, inch, six inches counted, 1 shot, 3 plus, 7 energy penetrative. I'm guessing that's an anti on the armor. Socks? It, it, it always hits on a 6. Okay. So even if uh, you, you don't roll enough energy, if you roll a 6, it'll hit. Okay. Uh... It's also got a Liberator Railgun. This is an optional weapon. Front, side, and rear. Infinite full. 24-inch counted. One shot. One plus 10 energy. This weapon causes critical hits when it beats an opponent's armor by one or more instead of two or more. This is the weapon for you, Bruce. Lewis... Can I take this in a in a UC and in a, in a scourge army, please? It's the only th it's the only chance I ever have of ever hitting anything. I don't ask for much. So I think he's, he's going to say no. Sorry, Bruce. He's just going to tell me to buy a new army like he was the other day. I I, I just want to like hear them talking at the in the shop now of like, oh my god, that does look like a little face now. <laughs> <laughs> Because now I'm looking at the railgun one. Dude, that's totally a Cyclops face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's fair to say that these... Bo like, if if you don't own these vehicles individually already, because some of these were already available, the box itself is a must-take. If you do own it, you can buy the new thing separately, and they're on pre-order for the same day, and it's still a must-take. Um, mm -hmm. Like, there's... Noth well, th there's no reason not to own these at all. Uh, there's been a couple of updates as well. Scourge walkers have been changed a little bit. They're less tough, but more resilient. Scourge armor isn't all that strong, but it's not like you can kill the crew. Uh, the Eradicator's Bio Mortar has a new weapon mode. The Harbinger tro uh, troop ship can carry an extra Screamer and plenty of Spectres. Uh, PHR Jet Skimmers have been made a little less agile. Shaltari gates now ignore the reaction fire penalties. Uh, firstborns have turned their energy swords down a bit. Uh, Pungari have some changes to reflect how useless they are on their own, but fantastic as a horde. <laughs> uh, you guys the remember the Pungari? You guys remember the Pungari models? They're like the little short guys that the Shaltari have. They're like they're. they're Pretty much the grunts. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I just, you know, the, the wording of that is just amazing. Oh, the, the wording is yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Ronan now have a really good reason to upgrade their weapons. So obviously their alternate weapon is better. Uh, resistance Jacksons are cheaper, but a little easier to hurt. So all of this seems like fairly decent uh, options. It's everyone but USA, UCM. 
pretty much, yeah, UCM have avoided any nerfs. Um, but they are offering feedback if you think there's something that still needs to be done. Uh, all of that should already be updated on the Drop Zone Commander website. So when you're building, it should already reflect that. Um, otherwise, upcoming um, events. I, I think that, well, I, I just want to, I, I think it's kind of nice to see that, you know, the PHR, like, they weren't joking in the, the opening statement to the Shaltari section. The PHR has got some shenanigans now. Oh, yeah. Like, Finally. seriously. And I, I I think it's quite entertaining that... That they're calling themselves you know, they, out on they it. They did something like that. And I'm going to do this real quick instead. Oh, it's been a while since we've had this. So, I was watching Big Bang Theory with Casey and came across yeah. a game called The Campaign of North a for North Africa. This game was published back in 1978, so it is as old as I am. Bruce, what do you think is the average... Or no, what what do you think is the up to play time for this game? You said seventies? It came out in nineteen seventy eight. And uh, the... military simulation genre, two to ten players. Play time. So based the... on the Nafra North African coast um, campaign. How long's the play time, Bruce? I suspect it's going to be something like five or six hours because it's the 70s. Do you want to know how horribly off you are, Bruce? Sure. Playtime is up to 1,500 hours. What? Who on earth would ever want to play that? This is something that Sheldon wanted to play, isn't it? Yes. yes. Um, well, Bernadette was uh, in labor with the second child. But yes, no. I, I, the, the, the episode came on and he pulls this out and I'm just like, so I Google it. I'm like, oh hey, that's an you know you know an actual game because he said the most difficult game ever made and I'm like, all right. And I looked it up and then I saw that and I was just like, what? Yeah. There, to my knowledge, there's only one game that features in that show that doesn't exist and it's the card game that he plays against Will Wheaton. To my knowledge, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like, the only one that didn't actually exist. And there was talk of them actually making that at one point, but I don't think they ever did. I no. could be wrong. So, so going back down to that... Quick, yeah. Go ahead, Sox. Going back to that game, you got to remember that... The, the, they're, they're little square, square chits. Those yep. are the pieces. My dad actually had a couple of those from his college days, and so I, I kind of know a few. So, so this is advanced pieces. risk, basically. Yeah, no. and you're... No, You're this is like, all... <laughs> this is this is I'm Rommel playing the, as the Germans. You're Irwin or not Irwin? Um, Montgomery as the British and George's Patton as the Americans. And you're playing with all your armies, your divisions, planning out your logistics. You got weather that's going to be involved. All of that, and you've got to. Hey, Bruce, I just sent you a a, a, a link to the uh, game board on your uh, on your. Facebook. Cool. I will have a look. Um, but I, I divided my, it out. That's, my grandfather was one of my, my grandfather was one of the rats of Trebrook. So, oh god, this is huge. <laughs> yes, that is a human child playing next to it. <laughs> I am never going to play this. Like, I'm just. I'm sure it's fun, but I'm. This this feels like homework. Yeah, no, I, I'm okay, thanks. <laughs> sure? Yep, I'm okay. This stuff still has an audience today, but not at that level. It does. I know you told me what that says, but I don't remember what it says. Here, we'll play it again with, with no one talking again. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't remember Convention what it says. Demos. Oh, that's right. All right. 
So, upcoming events. The Conquest Gaming Convention is still coming up. Conquest.asn.au This is Conquest. It's, it's a gaming convention. It's not about the Conquest game. Uh, from the 15th until the 17th of April. So it, it is coming up. It's still a little while away though. Uh, the Broadside 2 Official Armada Tournament, and I say official because it's literally being run by Mantic Games, still has one spot left. Um, all players receive a mystery gift, which, knowing Mantic, is going to be an unreleased thing. It usually is something that's unreleased. Uh, it's £10 registration. Takes place on the 5th of March. Like I said, there's only one spot left. So if you're living in that area of the world and you want to actually compete in something official and get something nice, I'd be trying to get in on that. If I lived there, I would, even though my army is still in the box. I would 100% be going if I could. Uh, and the World Model Expo is still coming up. This is from the 1st till the 3rd of July. Tickets go on sale on the 1st of March, so you cannot buy tickets yet. Uh, this is taking place at the NH Eidhoven Conference Centre in Konigshof in Veldhoven in the Netherlands. Uh, you can go to WM for Mary, E for Egg 2020.com. Whiskey Mike Echo Bruce. That works too. If you <laughs> haven't done already, please come across to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash getting tabled. We set ourselves a really big goal for our next birthday. We want to get to a thousand subscribers before then, if possible. Uh, please come across and help us achieve that. And you'll get access to everything and it'll tell you when we're unboxing stuff and, st and that. And these two are actually going to be doing stuff. George has already started. Uh, I'm slowly getting there. Yes. Thank you for upgrading your camera. It looks much better. If you would like to follow us on social media, facebook.com slash getting tabled is the most active that we have. We do also have an Instagram, which is at getting tabled. We also have a Twitter, which is at getting tabled. There is a patreon.com slash getting tabled. If you would like to support us, it's only $2 a month. Gives you early access to almost every video that we ever release. There's a few certain exceptions. And it's always explained why. If you'd like to reach out to the team, you can do so. Getting tabled at gmail.com. And if you'd like to join our Discord server, there's a link to the invite on your screen now. If you're listening um, to this, then go to our website. I think there's a link on there too. Um, aren't there some videos that only Patreons get to, to view too, Bruce, that we just we don't um, pu publish publicly, right? Or no? Uh, yes, sometimes. They're not oh. monthly. They get early so, access I, to every video we ever release. Uh, they get behind-the-scenes footage yeah. when there's changes coming up. And I, if I'm not 100% sure how to approach something, I'll actually ask their advice as to what they would rather see. I'm just saying that's another reason to, to become a supporter is there are some videos that you can only see if you support us in that way. They also have the option of listening to us live as we record. They cannot interact, that's well, true. beyond text, but they can actually listen to us live as we're talking. They get to hear like the, the, the pauses of silence that sometimes occur. <laughs> yeah because <laughs> that's so entertaining <laughs> alright JP and Jay no they're not even here slackers I know they're not I know they're not <laughs> we'll say hello to Chris as well then because he's also not here <sighs> I right. assume that you're Dude. trying to do the thing I'm going to do this thing now thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for listening to Getting Table. Music used in this podcast was created by Eric Mataris at soundimage.org.